everyone. I'm Monique Jacob Jacobs. <laughs> it's all that Christmas food that I've been eating <laughs> from Open Gate Quilts. Welcome to our Thursday night live. Um, remember, we are here every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central if you can make it. Um, if you can't, you can always check later on. We do have them up on our website or on our um, Facebook live page. Um, and don't forget to comment to say hi and to share and check out our website. So good to see everybody. Hope everybody had a great Christmas. We had a wonderful time, uh, very low key, which is always good. And um, now we're rearing and uh, on to our projects. So today we're gonna be doing some um, free motion machine quilting. I have a couple projects that I am working on. They are actually um, doll quilts for my great niece. I was talking to my niece on Christmas and she said that um, she, my great niece loves dolls. And I said, well, how about some doll quilts? And she said, oh, that would be awesome. So, so Barbie's gonna get a quilt? Barbie's getting a quilt and all her little stuffed animals are getting quilts. Barbie has them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently Barbie got a swimming pool, a camper, all that good stuff this year. So she really made out well. <laughs> So hopefully everybody had a good time. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we get started is um, we are offering on our website, opengatequilts.com. Is this the big announcement? The big announcement, free shipping, free shipping till the end of the year. So if you are waiting to get those rulers, those patterns, whatever you want, free shipping till the end of the year. So till the 31st at midnight. So make sure that you get your orders in. So um, that's the big announcement. Um, for this week, We uh, I would like to do a giveaway. My giveaway is for one lucky person, a free PDF pattern of Juicy Cactus. Mm -hmm. Juicy Cactus was on Craftsy.com. It is a pattern I designed for them, and it was a really good seller. It is a modeled um, modeled fabric and it does the light and dark and it's just one of those fabrics that are those quilts that just really pops so this one is going to be for one of those lucky people that um, for one lucky people person, person. oh my goodness <laughs> I can hear the dogs playing upstairs <laughs> <laughs> it's all distracting. <laughs> so one lucky person, it, you need to comment and to share and to let me know how your Christmas was. So hopefully everybody had a good time. Um, so that's what the free pattern is for one lucky person. And then, of course, I had to have my coastal chic finally because I finally got my binding on my night sky uh, so along. So I had to put that up as well. So. So, we are going to work on that. Let me see what other things we need to, to talk about. I think I got everything. Don't forget to check out our Instagram. We're at, at OpenGateQuilts. Um, and so check us out there. And of course, check us out on uh, Facebook as well. Because we're always coming up with new stuff. So make sure you like us or follow us. Right. And share, the... share tonight, people. We love we love to see lots of people watching. Yeah, tonight. it's so much fun to see people watching. And if you make a comment, um, Mark will tell me and I will let you know. We got some funny comments last time, last week. <laughs> <laughs> Using the sock for the curling iron, was that made me giggle. <laughs> it was great. It's awesome. <laughs> so, okay. So, make sure you comment and share. And let me show you how we're going to do this. And no, I'm not being lazy, but I'm going to be doing a lot of quilting today that's why I'm sitting here like this so okay what I'm gonna do is what I did was I made these little blankets already so t this afternoon I just whipped these up and all I did was on this one was just cut up my some 10 inch uh, squares of fabric so those layer cakes and I just made a little uh, strip set and so this I think will have to be for Barbie because it looks like a Barbie size, king size best for her. <laughs> and then this one here, um, probably for a bear or something. I don't know if she likes her, her doll. So whatever one she decides on. And I just did an easy little nine patch. And then this one, 
is just a little bigger. And so I just used one of the 10 inch squares and then cut some of the uh, other ones up to make my my little larger night patch. So very simple. If you have extra blocks around and you want to use them, one of the things that I have found when I'm machine quilting is if you practice on some little pieces, it will help you get better. If you start with a huge quilt, you, you know that the first it won't be so great, but if you get along, you'll get better. But it's kind of nice to have little little pieces because sometimes when you make a quilt, you might have an extra block that you don't put in. You could use that. You could use it to make these um, these little uh, doll blankets. You can use it just for practice. You can make a pillow. You can really do what you want. So how I did this was I basically I made my block. And I'm just gonna use this block as an example. And then what I did was I cut a piece of fusible batting. And I just used um, the uh, fusible batting, it's a polyester. This is not, but I'm just gonna show you. But I fused it to the wrong side of my block and I cut the fusible batting a half an inch smaller. So my block is actually six and a half inches because that would be six inch finished. And then I cut my batting six inches. So then what I'll do is I'll fuse it onto the back side of my uh, fabric or my block. And then I make this a little bigger. You really don't need to worry if it's too much bigger. You could go half an inch all the way around. I just cut a quick piece. And then what I will do is I will sew all the way around, leaving myself an opening. And when I le left my opening on these, I left my opening where there was no seam. So I left an opening here. That way that I didn't have to worry about pulling this those seams out when I flipped it through. So I'm gonna sew it all the way around, trim my backing down, trim my quarter, corners, diagonally turn it inside out and then I'm going to press my seam like that and then and you can probably see I think this is where I was I just sewed those together it's just a really simple you don't you don't have to do it this way you can bind it if you want I just wanted to do something really quick and simple so that when we get to quilting I don't have to worry about the pins being in the way because when you are quilting I'm trying to get that thread and it's not letting me um, <laughs> when you are quilting the pins will be in the way but you can work it work with them as you go any questions or any comments so far Everybody saying hi. Everybody saying hi. Hi, and everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. All right. So, what so we I want to know the directions from last week's projects. Those are on um, my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of them, so they're all there. So, check those out and also um, watch the video for more detailed instructions. Right. I, I guess my mom actually made some. Um, some business or not business uh gift card holders mm -hmm. and mark got a few yes, I did. <laughs> he got the ones i demoed for him last <laughs> week <laughs> okay but uh, the instructions are on the or, or a picture on the facebook wall right there so yes there's something there's not, nothing to download just a picture to look at right on that so yeah all so, right yeah so it's on there's there's a picture of the uh the instructions and there's one for each of the three things that we did. So uh, I just want you to know that you can just go ahead and copy it and then print it. Okay. Um, so those are on there. This is, um, I don't have any instructions for this, but if you want some, I can certainly whip some up. It's very simple. My suggestion is just to find out any, um, find a, a block that you may have or just throw a, stitch some strips together, do something really simple. Mm -hmm. um, this is for a doll, it's not for an heirloom, so the doll, the doll won't know if you're, you're off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the owner might know, but the yeah. doll won't. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna start, let's start with this one here. One of the things that I really like to do before I start 
quilting is I like to draw. So I'm going to have you come over here, honey. Okay. And, and by the way, Maria is watching from Florida from her RV, so I'm kind oh. of jealous. Hi, I'm Maria. Wondering. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to be getting cold soon. <laughs> so, okay. Hi, Maria. Um, so what I like to do, especially if I'm doing some quilting that I haven't done before or something that I want to practice a little bit, if you take your pen and your paper and... You just do a little bit of practicing. Don't worry if it's not perfect, because as you get better at the machine quilting, it will get better. But what it does is it helps you get in your brain how you're going to quilt. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna do a simple loop pattern. So I just go ahead and do some loops on the paper to kind of give me an idea of which way I want to go. Uh, it's easier to stop, obviously, when you have the paper and the pen, but you can just keep kind of going in and out. And remember, if you're off a little bit, it's no big deal, you'll get it. It just takes practice doing the machine quilting, but it is kind of fun. But this is one of the things that I recommend that you do, is just go ahead and do some work beforehand before you get to your machine. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. So on this particular one, I'm gonna do a loop. Remember when you are doing your machine quilting, you want to um, put your darning foot on. So I've got my darning foot on. I've got my thread in the top and thread in the bottom. And then I also lower my feed dogs. The reason you want to lower your feed dogs is that when your foot goes down, your feed dogs are down and you can move it anyway. So when you're machine quilting, you can go left, right, back, forth um, at a 45 degree angle, whichever you, way you want to go. So that's why you put your feed dogs down. So you want to make sure you do that. Another thing I want to show you are these little rubber fingers. I really like these rubber fingers. Some people like the gloves that you can use to hold the quilt. I find I like the rubber fingers because it gives me um, my other fingers uh, without them and then it, I can kind of use them to grip and I don't feel like I have these big gloves on. So you get a better feel for the quilt. Yeah, right yeah, right. yes, much better feel for the quilt. Some people don't like them. Some people tend to do this while they're doing it, so mm -hmm. it doesn't work. But I, I really like them. So um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use them. So I have those there. I've seen some of the, the gloves that are coming out now, and like only two of the fingers are covered, and the rest are uncovered. Yeah, so it's kind of the same, same kind, kind, and this is a lot cheaper. Um, and you can get them. I, I bought boxes of them. You can get them at the, obviously the office supply store or an office if you have an office at home. So anyway, that, that's what I have. Another thing that I wanted to, to point out is that I have my extension table on here. I, when I piece, quilt, do anything, I always have my extension table on. Reason is it gives me a little more space, especially for quilting, so I can put my hands out like this so it gives me a lot more space and if I take it off when I have this is a very small space so when you're trying to machine quilt you don't have anywhere to hold on to over here so if you do ha have an extension table definitely put it on if you're planning on um, doing a lot of machine quilting I would recommend that you get one it really will make your life a lot easier Okay, so now that I've told you kind of what I wanted to, what I'm using, I also want to point out that I'm using a 100% cotton thread, both for the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. For this baby, this doll quilt, it's not going to make a big difference, but I like to use the same kind of fiber, so I use the 100% cotton. What about a needle? What kind of needle do you use? I use a, do I have any needles over here? I use a universal needle, a size 70. Now, sometimes it is a smaller eye needle. Um, you can use an 80. Um, 90 gets a little bigger eye, but I use, tend to use a 70. Some machines 
that doesn't work. So you want to test your machine before you go any further. Yeah, we got the heat on because it's getting cold outside. <laughs> All right. So when I'm machine quilting, remember when you're doing this, normally you would have pins in here, but because we're we're just doing this little little blanket, I am not going to worry about it. And I also fused my batting on here, so I don't have to worry about the pins. So is it, is it better to start from the middle or the outside? What do you think? I, when I'm working on a quilt, I usually start from a corner and work my way through the quilt. So I kind of go like this through my quilt, okay? Um, the reason that I can do that, because normally you want to start in the center and kind of move your way out, but because I fused it or I pinned it really well, I don't worry about it buckling. So I'm going to start in my corner. When I start, start, what I'm going to do is I need to bring my bobbin thread up to the top. What this does is it prevents you from getting your bobbin messed up at the bottom. You know how sometimes when you start sewing, you get that rat's nest at the bottom? I'm gonna show you how to prevent this. So this is, it takes, it's a little tricky, but once you get it, you'll be fine. What you do is make sure you put your foot down. You're gonna take one stitch. So you're gonna go down and up. You're gonna lift your foot up, pull this away, and pull up the loose end and the end coming from your needle and pull that through. Okay. okay. I'm gonna show you again, because this part can be a little tricky. And I'm gonna show you from the middle, because then you can kind of see. Put your foot down. Now, I can, with my machine, I can just tap my foot and it goes right back up to the top. If you have a manual machine, you're gonna have to manually pull it down once and make sure this metal piece up here is at the top. Do you wanna show them that metal piece, honey? This metal piece, if it's at the top, then I know that I can release it. So I lift my foot, pull this out, and pull out my thread. All right, so that's how you pull your bobbin thread up. And you can practice on a scrap if you want, or you can just practice on your quilt, because basically you're not stitching, you're just pulling your thread. So I put my foot down, needle down once, and then up, and then pull that out. Always make sure that you put your knee, your foot down. Another thing that I like to use that I have on my, sh my machine is called the needle down position. So I engage that on my machine and to start, what I'm gonna do is I do, I'm gonna, just gonna go slowly and do what I call pack my stitches. What that is, is it just makes your stitches really small for about, I don't know, about three eighths of an inch. Do you need some more light? Oops. <laughs> All right. So once I've done that, can, is that okay or do you need more light? That's good. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to put my little fingers back on. This has some different lighting. sure you can see okay so now I'm gonna do the loop so remember when I was practicing what I do is I go in and out and notice too what I'm not doing is I'm not turning my quilt I'm moving it from side to side and up and down Another thing that I'm doing is I'm not going to. What that happens then is you get big stitches and little stitches. So I'm just trying to keep it as even as possible. And then I just keep going around and fill in those spaces that I missed. Another thing that you might want to do is make sure that you have a new needle in your machine because if your needle's dull, you're going to stitch, skip stitches, easy to say. So you're just going to keep going in and out. So that's how you do a very simple loop on there. 
if, for instance, I'm sewing along, blah, 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 here we go, having a good time, and I run out of bobbin thread. Oh, darn, now what do I do? What you'll do... Cry. Don't cry, <laughs> and don't sweat. You take it out of your machine. <laughs> And what I'll do is I'll fill my bobbin or take my bobbin if I've ever got one full is I'll go back to where I ended. So I ended right there. I'm going to go back about three eighths of an inch from it and again bring my bobbin thread on top. And I'm going to pack my stitches so I'm just going to go really slow. You know, a good way to have a, a, like a marker or something where you left off is leave a thumb pen or something. Or a, yeah. a safety pen a so safety you don't pen. hurt yeah. yourself. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good idea. Somewhere to, to mark it. Um, yeah, because sometimes it's hard to see where you've left off. So, yeah. so that's how you would do it. And then you just go ahead and clip that off because you've secured your ends. You've caught the other end underneath. And then you'd continue to do your your machine quilting for the rest of the quilt. You ready for some questions? Sure. All right. All right, I'll quilt while you get the questions. It's very therapeutic. Uh, Gail says, you know, so you're using a smaller, uh, your table smaller. Do you use a bigger size table to make for your machine? What it was the question? The table size. Do you, like use this? A large, do you use something larger? No, I mean for the sewing machine itself. This here, um, you can use something larger. This is the one that, that I, I got with my machine, so that's why I use that one. If you have a bigger one, absolutely, by all means, use it. Because what happens with when you have a big quilt it will pull on your needle too because it's pulling so if you have more space out here that you can put your um, quilt on to keep the weight from going down that helps a lot too mm -hmm. um, some people have their machine in their cabinet and that works out great too because then again they have that nice um, big space to work with so that works one of the things that you want to do, and I don't have this right here, is have a nice comfortable chair too, because you want a chair that I'm feeling very low, so I'm not feeling as in control. I can I have an office chair that I work with upstairs in my sewing room that's a, that I can lift higher, so I'm higher and I can look down and feel better about it. So that's another thing. And so I just got a, a really nice office chair at Office Depot or Office Max or whatever and I use that for when I'm sewing and quilting, so that helps me a lot as well, so. Do you find it easier with uh, with or without one of those Supreme sliders? Supreme slider. Sliders. I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> and are you using a darning foot? I am using a darning foot, yes. Tell me what a Supreme slider is, whoever is asking, and I can answer you, because obviously <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> that I haven't used it, but um, I would be interested to know. So, and what I want to know is what kind of machine are you working on? I am working on my with my Bernina 1080. It's an older Bernina machine, and um, it's it's a nice quilting machine. I do quilt on my Faf as well, but um, I chose to use my Bernina because I liked this little um, place to put my hands down. So, all right. So I'm going to end this and when you end just pack your stitches like you did at the beginning so just make smaller stitches and then when i come back because i'm going to need to finish this later i'll start here and continue the quilting so that's how i do my loop i'm going to show you some more ideas on how for quilting another idea that you can use i'm going to take these because they're making my fingers sweat is you can do a stipple. A stipple is a great one for practicing as well. And a stipple, I always think of puzzle pieces, how they go in and out and kind of fill in spaces. So here is, do I need to go bigger? Can you see it okay? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So I just come back over here and 
kind of fill in the spaces. So a stipple is a really good one to do. Um, another one that I use a lot of is a, um, a wave. So what I will do is I'll go in and then I'll do another wave and then come back here and do another one. So again, you're kind of filling in spaces and doing circles so this is a great one too because it goes pretty quick and I imagine when you're making you're about to quilt your quilt your uh, project it's probably a good thing to kind of lay out what you want and get yeah ideas. yeah and and what I find when I'm machine quilting is that some quilts like there are some quilts that you think okay there's a lot of like straight lines in here Curves will really help soften those. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a modern quilt, you might want to do something like um, like squares. I'll show you. I've done something that where you do like a loop, but you're doing squares instead. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, the quilt is what we are looking for. We're not, the quilting is to highlight the quilt. And there are beautiful quilts that are all quilting or the quilting is the main element of of it um, and that's fine but I like the idea of highlighting the quilt because look at all the work that you put into that piecing that quilt you you put a lot of work into making sure those points go together that everything looks good so I want to highlight it so say for instance I have something that I want to highlight you can always do like in here Instead of doing an all over, I've got this nice big space. I could do um, a stencil or something. Stenciling is a little different. What you do is you have to mark onto it or use some kind of tissue paper, put it on there and quilt on the line. I'll tell you, quilting on line is way harder than doing free motion because if you're off the line or if you're kind of jagged or something, you notice much more than if you are in the free motion because free motion you can just kind of go wherever you want and if you cross a line oh well it's not going to make a difference because nobody's going to notice so you just have to kind of play with it and see what works well for you these are some ideas i'm going to show you on this one here um i will do some of these little wavy ones too so you can see how that works so again, I'm gonna start in my corner, bring my bobbin thread up to the top. There you go. And then pack my stitches. Put my needle down. And I like to get rid of my threads right away so I don't have to worry that, about them getting caught. And so I'm just going to do my little waves. And remember, I'm not perfect. And this is fun. It's supposed to be fun. Don't stress too much about it if you're off a little bit. And it's also a learning experience. It took me a long time to get to the point where I feel comfortable doing this. And I just practiced. I just played with it and did a whole bunch of different quilts. And eventually, it just kind of came to me. Mm -hmm. And so, plus these little doll quilts are, you know, perfect. they're great to practice, perfect to practice on. Excellent right? to practice on. Because you can, and another thing, if you do something like this, this would be a great one to do different border options in. Because you could do just a little bit of um, different borders in each one. Um, for this one in each of the squares you could do something different so you could have some different options in there you could do like a stipple and then the loop and then the square loop and whatever else you want to put in you can put them all in the different ones so that's some options as well for practicing and the another thing I wanted to tell you guys is the um, more plain the fabric is the more you're going to notice the quilting so if you don't if you want it to show 
like on the back of here, you can really see the quilting. So you can see every little mistake I made. So one thing I don't usually do is use a solid backing um, unless I really want to highlight, the, show the quilting. I don't worry too much about it anymore because I figure if it's off a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're really worried about it, just keep that in mind. If you have a busier fabric, and depending on your thread, the busier fabric it is, the less you're gonna see the quilting. So that's another thing to keep in mind. As far as thread color, I like to go, um, I learned this from my friend Sue, everybody met Sue uh, about a month ago. Um, she told me that you, you want to go tend towards the lighter. So if you had two pinks, I would tend to want to go with a pink or even just a white because if I go darker, it's really going to stand out on the light. And again, that's a matter of preference. I prefer not to have it stand out so much, but some people really want it. So you might want to do that. Another thing you could use is a variegated thread to give it a little more interest. And that would really show the quilting and um, give you a little more interest in a plain square or plain block like this. So there's plenty of options. My suggestion is, is have fun with it and just try different things. Remember to um, draw it out a little bit before you start so you kind of get used to doing it. Um, what I did when I first started um, working with Sue's long arm machine, she lets me use her long arm, thank you Sue so much, um, is I would draw, I did, I had a lot of drawing and even had on my iPad a little drawing um, uh, app and I would just draw in it so I would get used to the motion of each design that I was doing and it really helped me a lot. You'd kind, be surprised. Of, kind of like muscle memory almost, yeah. It's exactly it. That's yeah. exactly right. So that's just some um, some options for doing it. So that's how uh, you do some machine quilting. I want everybody to do some practicing so I can see, see, see. And, and again, <laughs> thanks everybody for sharing all their quilts and their stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Cause, and Mark's checking to see if we have any um, uh, questions. Um. Do the silicone tips really help moving the quilt? Yes, they do. And the reason they help is because they kind of grip it. So, and see, it kind of helps move it. And yeah, you can use your fingers, but mm -hmm. it, it, they do really help. I have put them on all fingers, but I find that these work the best. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll get to the point where they're hot and sweaty and I'll put them aside and not quilt with them. But then after a while, it's like, okay, I need them again to help me grip. So. Would Good you question. use a would you use a variegated thread in the bobbin too? Um, if it is a hundred percent cotton, I would. If you you want to have like with like, um, when I just did a variegated one, and I think I used just a regular thread in the bobbin. Um, you would want to say if you're doing a variegated pink, you would want to do a pink in the bottom. You wouldn't want to do a black, because when you what happens is sometimes your thread doesn't go exactly in the middle because your thread meets. Sometimes it doesn't go right in the middle. Sometimes it comes up, sometimes it goes down. So if it's pink and I'm using a pink variegated, I won't notice it as much as if I say I used a black. And every once in a while, I might see a little black dot on my pink quilt, which I wouldn't want. So I try to do the light colors on the top and the bottom. Okay. Same with weight of threads. You want to use the same weight as the top and the bottom so that it'll it get as even as possible. So that was a good question. And okay. the variegated, you know, it, it you can use it in the bobbin as mm -hmm. long as it's the same, like 100% cotton. Another question. Is sure. it better to go fast or slow in free motion quilting? That is your, it's up to you. Um, I can go fast because I've been doing it a while. At first, you don't want to go too slow because if you go too slow, your stitches are going to get too long and it's going to catch. So you want to try and get in a rhythm. Um, I would say when you start, if you have a medium speed on some machines, you can put it down to medium. You can use the medium speed. The thing that I have gotten used to is getting my foot 
controlled so I can go as fast or as slow as I need to go and my hands will go with it. If you're finding you're catching, so you're sewing and you can feel your needle catching, that means that you need to go faster with your foot. If you find your stitches are really, really small, that means you need to slow your foot down. So you kind of get used to doing that. So that is a feel and you will get that. That just takes a little bit, again, a little practice. And these are, like, like Mark said, perfect for practice because my niece is gonna love them. She won't know if I've messed it up. She'll just see those pretty colors and think that's perfect for my Barbie. <laughs> Any other questions? That's it for now, I think. So, but just remember folks to win this great pattern, this juicy cactus pattern is, uh, be sure you comment and you share it. And that's really important to us. You gotta share. And of course, like us and yeah. tell your friends all about Open Gate Quilts. Yeah, and definitely. of course the the big, the big news the big sale the big sale free shipping make sure yeah. that you if you are looking for stuff go online of course the pdf is no shipping but all the regular patterns and the rulers are all free uh free shipping so go ahead and order those and um we'll get you out your stuff so so yeah i think that's it so um if you have any other questions about the machine quilting message me leave a comment i will answer those um and if we have any questions left over i'll definitely get those next week if you have any um suggestions on what you want me to do next week let me know i will i have some ideas so don't stress if you don't be, but i always like to see um if anybody wants to want something in particular um and I guess I don't really have a tip. I guess my whole thing was tip time tonight, right? That's right. <laughs> you know, everything was tips, so there wasn't a specific tip. So, um, so yeah, that's. I think that's it. So everybody have an awesome, happy new year, safe, and make sure you tune in next Thursday. We will be here and quilt binding. Enjoy. Bye.